friends, uh, this is our Bible study time again. It is Wednesday noon, and this program comes from the Riga United Methodist Church. <clears throat> My name is Pastor Timo Carbone. Our assistant, Pastor Mary Miller, is here with me as well. So, um, Ralph, are we on the whole screen? Yeah. So um, it, we are a little bit working on this technology again. So hopefully we see you. Uh, well, we don't see you, but hopefully you see us. So a, um, at least uh, that will make all the difference. It's a beautiful day here in Berea. It's a sunny day. We can't say that it is the warmest day of the year, but considering this late January, there's a saying I think that um, everybody will agree with is that once we get through January, it's going to get better <laughs> uh, weather-wise. Uh, December can be challenging or different as well, but we have Thanksgiving and uh, at least right there, and then we have Christmas and many other wonderful things. The whole season of Advent is giving us light and brightness, but then January is kind of very laborious. Uh, if we get snow any time of the year here in Kentucky, it seems like it is January. But it's God's given day. It's a day of uh, God's uh, word, and it's a day of God's love for us. So uh, let's be thankful for it. How are you doing, Mary? Doing all right. Good. Doing all right. Okay, good, good. Ralph doing good? You don't, you don't see Ralph, we see. Yeah. Two thumbs up. That, that's a that's a plus right there. Okay, well now we can kind of adjust it. <laughs> anyway, we have reason to believe that uh, Dr. Company is doing well as well. Let's say a prayer before we start working on our today's assignment uh, that is before us. Let's let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we can study your word and we can. We can uh, read, read your word, we can listen to your word, we can pray to your word, and we can feed our souls and, and spiritual life and, uh, by your word. So we need, we pray, uh, come Holy Spirit, come upon this study. Help us to see uh, Jesus and help us to hear his voice. Help us to uh, understand what we are reading and help us to learn from it. I also pray for everyone who is available for the study. And Lord, I pray for their, for their day. I pray for their personal life. I pray for their family and all that is included. In Christ's name, amen. There's so much for us to pray for during these times. Uh, I keep on saying that our prayer ministry stays vital and busy, mm -hmm. which is to say that we are responding to the needs of our families and friendships and, and the church and community and worldwide. Physically, we can't go to too many places, at least at the same time. But by prayers, we can visit so many, many places, so many needs. Mm -hmm. So many different people, and, and and when you pray, you bring God's bless, uh, presence for the people you are praying for. And not just that, you bring yourself into God's presence. Because you can pray for somebody called for it. You need to uh, bring your heart to the Lord to, to pray for somebody. And you can pray anytime, any place. This is why, for example, our church father John Wesley said, talking about uh, what are the means of grace, channels through which God speaks to us. He believed that prayer is the main means of grace for the reason that anybody can pray anytime, any place uh, with one requirement with one condition, should I say, that we bring our heart first to the Lord. You bring your heart first to the Lord. I have uh, 
when I'm talking about prayer and thinking about prayer, when I teach about prayer, as I'm doing right now, uh, I believe that one part, one big thing about us praying and our prayers is that we try to see what Jesus sees and we try to hear what Jesus hears. I believe Mary that many times when we pray, we bring our thoughts and expectations and our ideals to God and we ask him to bless them. Yeah. And that may not be God's way, God's way. So uh, when we pray, we go to the Lord, we turn our heart to him and we say, Lord, before I pray, would it be possible by the presence of your Holy Spirit, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, you help me to see and you help me to hear so that I can pray. And it puts us in the right position uh, with our prayers. And I believe our prayer time will be more successful than anything else. Okay. That is about prayer. It's very important during times like this. I know, friends, you are praying for our church, for other churches as well. We, people who are working in the ministry, we need prayers. Uh, and and uh, who are on leadership, uh, servant leadership, we definitely need prayers. But we all are in the ministry and we all need prayers. So thank you for your prayers and be sure to know that we are praying for our church family and for this community mm -hmm. constantly. Now, Apostle Paul's second letter to Corinthians. Today we are working on the 11th chapter. After this, we have two chapters left. So if you wanted to kind of get a feel how many more chapters we are to study, two chapters after this. Mm -hmm. Then we are again done with one letter of the Apostle Paul. Guess what? There are many, many more coming <laughs> to our way. So, uh, and when we say we are done, it, 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 it doesn't mean, okay, we never again need to go back because we know it already. My son was little, maybe four years old, five years old. Well, was a little bit, maybe a little bit older, maybe six. By the time he learned to read, and he was pretty much following me all the time uh, in the ministry too. When I was visiting, Mike was visiting with me. And many times he gave, gave me a report about Sunday morning services, who was there, who wasn't there. So he was my deacon or however you want to call him. And here, um, then one day he noticed I was reading my Bible and, and then Mike walking, and maybe he had some requests to make. I remember what it was all about. But anyway, I said, well, give me a little time. I'm, I'm reading now, and I will, I will get, to, get to that before too long. I said, I asked Mike, have you been reading your Bible? Because he had his own Bible, and after he learned to read, he said, no, I know already about it. I already read. I know everything about it. I said, okay, you are... You are fast, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> After reading one time, I don't know what he has read. He knew it all, all about it, everything about it. Now that's very okay to hear from six year olds. <laughs> yeah. But I am sensing that sometimes I am about to hear that Mary from somebody who is 60 years old. Mm -hmm. And been reading Bible one time, at some point, believing that, okay, I know everything about it already. Here's the thing, don't get discouraged. The more you read this book, the more you study this book, whether academically or just read by reading or attending a Sunday school, the more you understand, the less you know about it. The less you know about it. Because as you are studying and reading, your standards goes a little bit deeper or higher, however you want to describe it. I don't want to say that you don't learn nothing. Yes, you do. But also as you study the Word of God, 
you are hungering to know more. Mm -hmm. And then you are exercising a little bit more common sense and judgment upon yourself uh, that you say that somebody else is definitely so wrong and you are right because you know the Bible. So you are getting more common sense to know that, well, yes, I am strong in the Bible. I know a lot about Bible, but I am not in the place or position that I can start passing judgment about somebody who may see something a little bit different angle. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility and common sense. And it, it is called spiritual maturity. You can be firm and steady and strong with the basics. But there are some things in the Bible that uh, you read it and you understand and you keep your faith the way you see it. Mm -hmm. But please uh, exercise love and understanding about if somebody sees it, see it from different angles. This has something to do with doctrinal issues as well. But there are some everyday uh, matters related to human life that uh, you, you may want to say that, okay, here's how I see it, but I know that I don't know all about it. So there is little room for, uh, for, to, do that, to do that. Okay, let's go back to this chapter uh, 11 today. Let's read Mary first uh, five verses from this chapter. I hope you will put up with a little bit more, I'm sorry, I hope you will put up with a little more of my foolishness. Please bear with me, for I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promised you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ, but I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the spirit. You happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach, or a different kind of spirit than the one you received, or a different kind of gospel than the one you believed. But I don't consider myself inferior in any way to these super apostles who teach such things. Is that where you want me to stop? To read one more, yes. Mary, yes. I may be unskilled as a speaker, but I'm not lacking in knowledge. We have made this clear to you in every possible way. All right, thank you. That's one through six. Yes, one through six. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's an interesting the, beginning statement. I hope you'll put up with a little more of my foolishness. Aha, uh -huh. I was <laughs> going to say that. That's a, that's a little bit different statement from Apostle Paul. So he's saying, okay, I would say this, and I don't know that's the perfect way to say it, but bear, bear with me, bear with me. Right. I'm still going to say it because I want to make my point across. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's coming here for too long, what his point was. What was going on in the church, Mary? What was going on there? Why he had to write words like this? Mm -hmm. Something like this. Well, as, as uh, we talked about in chapter 10, there were other teachers mm -hmm. in the Corinthian church that, that some of the Corinthians were um, giving more, uh, were following and listening to more than what Paul had taught them. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they, from what Paul says about them, it seems that they were very... Um, Kind of charismatic in the way that they're very uh, like draw people to them very uh, fine speakers mm -hmm. and kind of flashy maybe mm -hmm. um, but that their what their message is not truly the gospel that Paul mm -hmm. preached so mm -hmm. he's um, he's basically trying to tell them look I might not be like that mm -hmm. but um, here, here are my credentials, and, and you really ought to believe and listen to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think that's basically where we're at. He's trying to uh, mm -hmm. uh, convince them of his, his authority. You put it, yeah, and you are right. Uh, we could have put it a little bit stronger that they were 
different kinds of teachers than Paul or taught a little bit differently based on how Paul was reacting here gives a reason to believe that they were false teachers false teacher. okay. yeah. they were teaching false doctrine uh, for their personal gain maybe right. Right. and Paul did not hesitate to to shoot shoot them and shoot them strong what I'm saying is that he really uh, wanted to make sure that okay these guys uh, uh, there's no need to listen to these guys. They're, they're, they are they are they are spreading. They are teaching false doctrine. They are after something different, something else that God's glory. Leading you astray. So, that's right. So that was going on at the church in Corinth. At the Corinth. So um, that was pretty pretty difficult situation and that is in the light of that we understand that the words that we are reading here uh, was pretty pretty well they were strong they were strong they were words of truth and and seeking for for uh, attention among uh, God's people at Corinth and and I think that the the more sad thing was that Paul had reason to believe that the Christians at Corinth were accepting these false teachers. They were actually excited about them and how easily it can happen in the church. Here in verse 4 he says, you happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach, or a different kinds of spirit than the one we received, you received, or a different kinds of gospel than the one you believe. So they were going wrong at any level of Christian Christian uh, faith. They were going along with these false false teachers, and that is why Paul had to uh, really come with very strong against them. Mm -hmm. And when you are apostle. When you are the founder of the church, you are representing Christ, you don't have any other options. That's how you need to mm -hmm. go about it. So um, that is what was going on at Corinth uh, in the church there. So uh, that, was a, that was a challenging situation to deal with. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure uh, at the same time they were false teachers, they were also... Uh, miscalculating, underestimating, or putting Apostle Paul in the bad light yes. in front of the church mm -hmm. uh, in order to gain some personal uh, respect or appreciation or uh, uh, acceptance or approval, I guess would be the right word to say. I'm talking about the false teachers. And that is a pattern that is going on too often. If people want to lift them up, they have to they feel they have to put somebody else down to get themselves being lifted up. So that's, a, that's an old uh, trick. And I'm, I'm so sorry that people buy into it very often. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, people who, have, who are well balanced and who has a, who has a uh, God inspired self esteem and uh, understanding about grace and God's grace and, and, and power for him there's no need to put if you want to get your words across and you want to prove prove who you are you can do it just that way instead of putting somebody else down if you start doing that then it proves that um, maybe there maybe 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 there's something wrong about you and that was definitely the case here in Corinthian church because right. They were obviously very publicly going against Paul and referring about his preaching skills. Uh, and that is, that's taking it pretty too far. Yeah. I believe when I'm reading Apostle Paul's letters, getting an idea about his preaching skills, that he didn't believe that so great. So, but that is pretty thick from his opponent, opponents, these false teachers. 
I've been saying that he's not much preacher at all. Look at, listen to us, how elegant I am, how gifted I am as a speaker. Well, I may see the, things a little bit from different perspective, but yet I am much better than him. Because he's saying here at verse 6 that I may be unskilled as a speaker. Wow, that was a humble statement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a Billy Graham, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, well-known statement from him as he was asked by reporters who wanted to question his crusades and his uh, publicity and all that thing that if and I was in the, at the present when he was asked in Amsterdam, Holland, that why you believe, why do you believe, Mr. Cram, that you are the, the only preacher in the world, so gifted beyond anybody else that you can run crusades like this? And I can see how, I remember how this humble God servant answered it. He said, I am not quite following the question, but I can say only this, that I never thought, unless today, that I am anything special when it comes to my preaching skills. He said, there are lots of pastors and preachers who are much more gifted than I am. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a humble statement. Mm -hmm. but, but then he said, only thing I can say, this is Billy Graham saying, that when God called me, I was 14 years old when he called me. I had I have wisdom enough to answer to him, yes. I answered yes to God when he called me. And you should have seen Mary how this humble statement kind of kind of uh, how should I say uh, was a uh, too big answer too it was something so different that they were expecting to yes, hear. Yes, yes. Maybe he started you know, uh, defending himself. Well, I, I am. I, who, can you see what kind of what size of crusades we run? Obviously, I am much more than anybody else. But that was that was not his thinking. Mm -hmm. That wasn't what Billy Graham thought. Uh, so it came from his heart. Surprised the, the surpri he's surprised by this. And it kind of. Yeah, how do I say it? They didn't have no weapons. Of <laughs> Sometimes, with all due respect, if you are a reporter out there, I've been in that spot a few times, uh, sometimes they can be pretty uh, attackful or, or purposeful. Yeah, they are trying to get an answer that they are looking for and they are desperate to, to get it from you. And I don't know whether that is a good journalism or not. I, I don't take... I don't take uh, uh, I don't uh, say anything about that, but but anyway, uh, here is what I, I guess I, I saw connection with Dr. Billy Graham, who is now with the Lord. Everybody knows that, but uh, so is Paul. But some connection here that I know that Apostle Paul uh, was a great speaker. He was a deep theologian, obviously Bible writer. And, and taught by God himself and inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it has to be, a, you have to have a cut to say to the apostle that, you know, you are not much of a preacher at all. <laughs> and the way he, he defending himself here is a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. you know? Listen to it. I may be unskilled as a speaker. Unskilled. Paul, you were not unskilled. <laughs> But I am not lacking in knowledge. I'm not lacking in knowledge. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, a, that's a big statement right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. anyway. Right. Okay, so that's a strong start for this chapter 11. Something was going on. Well, we know there's false teacher. False teachers taking over the ministry mm -hmm. uh, in the church. And Paul had to defend the right doctrine. And the believers who were, as he put it, you happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, uh, even if they preach a different Jesus. Uh, that's, a, that's a scary situation. Mm -hmm. That can destroy the church, and of course, Paul didn't want to see that happen. Anything else, Mary? We have an, um, uh, verse 2, mm -hmm. his statement of, I am jealous for you with the oh, jealousy yeah. of God himself. I promised you as a pure bride 
to one husband, Christ. Um, yeah. I guess that just again shows the depth of his uh, his love and and pouring his whole life out for the for these people for the Corinthians. I'm jealous for you, mm-hmm. meaning I want you to be totally sold out to Jesus. Yes. To the gospel. I'm jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. Mm-hmm. I promised you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ, to be totally um, focused on Christ as, as you are uh, following him. Yeah, so yes. just really, again, strong, uh, strong words that show just an immense amount of Dedication and devotion and mm-hmm. and servant uh, attitude that Paul has toward the Corinthians. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, being jealous for you with the jealousy of God Himself. Mm-hmm. So if I say anything here, I'm jealous as God is jealous for you. I'm I'm just I don't want you to go wrong. I love you too much for you to go wrong yeah. to give up with with what you have received. What I'm going to do, I'm going to offer these false teachers. Mm-hmm. And probably Paul has reason to believe that they know they are wrong, but they are doing it for, for secondary reasons. Mm-hmm. Not right reasons, anyway, for right reasons. Okay, let's, let's move on. Okay. Uh, not that we got it all done, friends. <laughs> we didn't get it done, but we, uh, we probably grasped something that was um, very, very, uh, very important within these uh, verses. Let's move on. Let's uh, move on from verse seven through eleven. Okay. Was I wrong when I humbled myself and honored you by preaching God's good news to you without expecting anything in return? I robbed other churches by accepting their contributions so I could serve you at no cost. And when I was with you and didn't have enough to live on, I did not become a financial burden to anyone. For the brothers who came from Macedonia brought me all that I needed. I have never been a burden to you and I never will be. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, no one in all of Greece will ever stop me from boasting about this. Why? Because I don't love you? God knows that I do. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. There we are talking about some practicalities. Again, I believe in the light of uh, the criticism that a, uh, uh, Paul has been criticized about, mm-hmm. about something, maybe about his personal gain. Uh, and, and he make a, a clear report on, on what was going on, what has been going on. Uh, he said, I, was I wrong when I humbled myself and honored you by preaching God's good news to you without expecting anything in return? So uh, that is, uh, I, I, you can almost feel that maybe, maybe that wasn't all good thing because these people seem like a preaching for their personal gain, saying that, well, guy who has a very average preaching skills probably that's all he can do you know that will be way too much if he's still asking money for for the very poor job that he's doing (coughs) so there are much better preachers out there and good preachers get good money too maybe maybe there's something like that not by word by word maybe there's something like that going on i'm talking about criticism that paul was dealing with uh, from this false false teachers Mm-hmm. So, but he said, I was there last time and I didn't ask for one penny from you. Right. Well, I did ask when I went to, uh, I robbed other churches, in quotation mark, I robbed other churches by accepting their contributions so that I could serve you at no cost. A financial burden to, to, uh, to become financial burden to anyone. So, uh, this was the reason that by the contributions that I have received elsewhere, I was able to do my work, to, to, to provide myself mm-hmm. when I was with you. 
And maybe Paul has reason to do that. And they, they just didn't have, they just didn't have money. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to be, he didn't want to be a burden to anybody. And then there is that connectionalism, again coming into picture, that is a big thing in the Methodist Church, which is to say connectionalism means that we're not just a one single uh, church somewhere there, but we are connected with other churches. So we share the mission, we share uh, the doctrine. Mm -hmm. There are differences between churches, of course, little differences, but basically um, we are not just a, an isolated territory somewhere. Um, so we are connected with other churches within our denomination. And spiritually, other churches in any denomination, mm -hmm. uh, because we love our brothers and sisters across the denomination line. So what what Paul says here is that for the brothers who came from Macedonia, brought me all that I needed. I have never been a burden to you, and I never will be. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, no one in all of Greece will ever stop me from boasting about this. So uh, I was not burden to anybody financially. So you can you can blame me on that. Why? Because I don't love you. I do love you. No, I I do love you. What did he mean by that? Let's go. This this is a little bit different statement. Uh, uh, to buy. Why? Why did he say, because I don't love you? Why? I mean, why I, I, didn't, I didn't take money because I don't love you? But what, 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 did he, what did he mean by this? What is your take? Well, he, he's saying, well, um, are you, you know, are, he's questioning their, their uh, perception of him, I think, mm -hmm. in that he's saying, so are you saying because, because I didn't ask you for any, any, funds or any support mm -hmm. um, does that does that mean in your eyes that first of all that uh, that my message wasn't very important or wasn't very good uh -huh. and then I second so. um, do you do you you know are you perceiving this as being well he must not really um, I don't know how how to say it um, that he must not really be um, uh, that, or that we must not be that important to him. Mm -hmm. um, and I, in other words, so he's saying, so do you think do you think I've done all this because I don't love you? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got it all wrong. Yeah, um, I believe, I, mean, I think you're after, right? I'm sure you are. Um, and there may be more than one issue here he was dealing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the response uh, this is why we talk about contextual connection, which is important for any Bible reader, and so that you see some wordings and some statements in the right context. Mm -hmm. For example, here it may have been a response to Corinthian church that you may have heard them say that he is not very valuable. He didn't have probably didn't have much to give to you. He probably didn't have much to share to you or teach to you. Uh, why would he any 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 way would ask something? Or maybe they were already receiving this false doctrine that mm -hmm. that a preacher who is a very good speaker and what else he can do? Bring in excitement to the listeners, even there's much much to it. They, 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 they are the valuables one. They, they are the ones who needs to be compensated well. Mm -hmm. The better you are compensated, the more value you have spiritually. Right. So they, they got that mindset growing. They got their mindset growing. We have reason to believe because what he says here before. And I believe that has something to do with Apostle Paul's, Paul's uh, answer here. Mm -hmm. That... I didn't want you to to uh, take care of me financially because I don't love you that much. Really, I didn't want to want to accept anything from you. Mm -hmm. 
be sure to know I do love you. So you can't measure by money the spirituality of right, the person right. or anything what is going on in ministry-wise. There's no way to do that. Now, <clears throat> so I, I think that that was part of his answer. I, I really believe that was. Mm -hmm. and, and, but guess what? There's so much false teaching going on in the world, even as I speak, about this very same issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been watching a TV program where, uh, where a, uh, different burdens were lifted up to the Lord, and then of course, uh, they were asking bigger and bigger offerings, and asking people, if you believe that God has blessed you, why don't you send 500 to us? Would it be too little contribution for the great blessing that we have bring you, we have brought to you yeah, by right, our prayer. Right, right. So I, I that was that was unbelievable. Think about it. So that was if anything is false teaching, that is false teaching. Yeah. In the eyes of who knows how many tens of thousands of viewers right, right. saying something like that. So that's a teaching. So since, since you know that this is so valuable now, and we've been praying these blessings for you, get your checkbook and write the $500 or what, even more mm -hmm. to pay it back yeah. to us. So I can see a little bit same, right. same background here, what Paul was, Paul was teaching. So or even, even the other, uh, kind of another part of that same thing is when people will, um, Teachers or priests or pa pastors or preachers will say, um, if you're not seeing blessings, then if you give money to our, to yeah. our ministry, then, then you, you will see blessings. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it goes back to the Catholic indul indulgences back in the, in yeah. the uh, uh, so Middle it's, Ages. Yeah. It's been with, with us. And at the same time, at the same time, when you see these false teachings, Good stewardship, well-balanced stewardship, constant, regular stewardship is something that is, is precious in God's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't want to bring that right in the middle. The more money you give, the more blessed you are. We, we pray more for you who, who are giving more. I mean, and then remembering what Jesus says in Matthew 10.10. 10. He teaches everyone who is serving, is titled to be uh, read. Compensated. Compensated. Yeah. I was the word. Not reimbursed. Compensated. Yeah. <laughs> Compensated. You, you, who is serving. So Jesus said that, that's, that's the natural. Mm -hmm. But don't make it as a main point. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul wanted to, I think that was one of his um, purpose as he was dealing with this. Don't make it your main, main remember, don't make it your main thing in worship services or any services that the more money you give, the, the, the more blessed you are. We make sure that you get that blessing. We pray more for you. And then if you don't, if you don't see blessings, start giving money more, maybe you see. So that, that is going, going wrong direction right there. And Paul wanted to make sure that we understand that. But they're um, interesting, interesting. So anything that is false has been always with the, with the Christian church. It is, there's nothing new about it really at all but the word of god is solid and it's been with us from the beginning so uh, that is always good good resource for us to go back anything else mary about this that you want to point out not in these verses i'm, I'm sure there is much more to it okay let's read from uh, verse 12 to uh, 15. okay starting at 12. But I will continue doing what I have always done. This will undercut those who are looking for an opportunity to boast that their work is just like ours. These people are false prophets. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I am not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. Okay, is not your... holding back any punches there. 
Say again. He's not holding back any punches. No, no, he's continuing, yeah. being very straightforward. Yeah. Uh, now, in verse uh, 13, did you read uh, uh, prophets or is it apostles in your... My verse? version says these people are false apostles. Okay, I thought that is what I heard you saying, prophets, mm -hmm. but anyway. Well, it might be the same, yeah. same, same like thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, um, yeah, Paul is really addressing pretty strongly uh, with this dilemma that was going on in the church there, which is going against false teachers, false apostles. They call themselves apostles, yet they were not apostles. Somebody who was the apostle was going against uh, the ones who claimed to be apostles but who were not apostles. Actually, they were false apostles. They were teaching wrong doctrine. Mm -hmm. It was like you have a garden and you've been working hard. Before too long, we start working on our gardens. Uh, and we are sowing right seed and, and we, are, we are working hard to, uh, to get our garden growing. So let me say, you've been working for several days and, and then you have, you have sown the seeds and you are expecting to, to, to get your beans and carrots and tomatoes and whatever you have been working on and planting. Now guess what? After you get your uh, sowing season done, your neighbor come over one night and sow some weeds there in your garden. Mm -hmm. And, and this is what was happening now, after planting the church, after uh, teaching them, encouraging, visiting them, not too many times visiting, but mm -hmm. connecting with them, through letter, through le letters we can say at this point, uh, through um, messengers he has sent there, and then by visiting them in person. Now somebody had come in mm -hmm. and by sowing uh, false, um, false doctrine there. So, of course, in the in the light of that, we understand that Paul didn't have much options, but to deal pretty straightforward with them. Yeah, they are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ, which is what we were just talking about. Paul said in verse fourteen, "I'm not surprised." They're doing this. Even Satan this, uh, disquises himself as an angel of light. That's so, okay if they call themselves apostles, yet they are not. Even Satan at one point called himself angel of light. Mm -hmm. So that has been going on for quite some time, mm -hmm. that kind of thing mm -hmm. in the life of the church. So Paul continues here within verses 12 through 15 uh, addressing about the same matter. Uh, behind of all this was his heart concern and love for the church. Right. 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 Not trying to trying to save his own career, personal career, or something like that. It was less important to him. Mm -hmm. But the um, concern for the church was the main thing. All right. Well, verse 16 through 21. Let's see what is there. All right. Yeah. Again, I say... Don't think that I am a fool to talk like this, but even if you do, listen to me, as you would to a foolish person, while I also boast a little. Such boasting is not from the Lord, but I am acting like a fool. And since others boast about their human achievements, I will too. After all, you think you are so wise, but you enjoy putting up with fools. You put up with it when someone enslaves you, takes everything you have, takes advantage of you, takes control of everything, and slaps you in the face. I'm ashamed to say that we've been too weak to do that. Mm -hmm. Did I say 21? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should I keep going? Yeah, just one, one sentence, and then we're done with 21 first. Oh, sorry. But whatever they dare to boast about, I'm talking like a fool again. I dare to boast about it, too. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Two parts of verse 21 there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The year, um, 
So he's, he's saying this fool word an awful lot, isn't he? Talking about he's sounding like a fool and listen anyway, like you would a foolish person. And um, just makes you wonder uh, if there's other words. Again, that's my, my question. Are there other words used in different translations, translations. for that? Or is it just always that, um, which I, I did not look up beforehand? Well, we can look into that uh, if there is another, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe using, I, I don't sound, I, I may sound unwise. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say this, this may not be the, the wisest word to say about this matter. This may not be the wisest approach to take as I am talking to you. Yet, I believe this is now the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. In normal circumstances, I would never use these words while I'm defending my authority or I'm going against uh, the false teachers. Um, I guess you can, you, can, you can hear him say something like that. Making myself sound fool, maybe it was something that Paul, well, I know it wasn't, uh, Maybe these words were not something that he used all the time. Maybe it sounded like mm -hmm. a little bit full hearing it from Paul. Again, I say I don't think that I am a fool to talk like this. Or is it going against these false teachers again saying, that, well, he's a fool, he's a fool. In King James, he uses the word fool. It uses the word fool also. Well, that is a big good criteria. That mm -hmm. is probably pretty common. Yeah common words used. We can, nowadays again, you can go back to your resources. Uh, I said, I have said a few times that I'm using different translations. Right. Just to sound, sometimes to that comparison reading. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing that if you replace, not totally different word, but maybe a little bit different, same, describing the same thing from a little bit different perspective. Yeah, maybe. different connotation. Yes, mm -hmm. well, that's a good word. Yeah. So, um, there maybe, maybe uh, if you put a word unwise here in the place of fool, it may sound a little different, yet mm -hmm. it don't change the meaning. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, fool so. people, if, if somebody's foolish, uh, he may be acting unwise too. Mm. Hardly never if you are acting foolish, doing something foolish, probably is not very smart. But Paul, Paul recognized that it may sound like a fool. Right. And I may make myself sound fool now, but yet I don't think I'm fool, but I need to say it this way. Right, right. Maybe, maybe he was thinking about his audience, the recipients, more than anything else which is very Paulian way. Mm -hmm. Listen to when he's preaching in, in Athens and then he's preaching to some country people, some mm -hmm. elsewhere, you know. Very different. Mm -hmm. Very different context. And yet you can tell that, tell that he made connection. Verse 20, it sounds almost like there's a specific uh, situation he's speaking of here. You put up with it when someone else, when someone enslaves you, mm -hmm. takes everything you have, takes advantage of you, takes control of everything, and slaps you in the face. That sounds like a very specific yeah. uh, example that is or, what he or situation. Yeah, what he's It's going yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Somebody had taken over. And... Take everything you have, takes advantage of you, mm -hmm. takes control of everything, mm -hmm. and then slaps you in the face. In other words, uh, uh, doesn't give any regard to you, slaps you in the face. Yeah, this is again a little bit different statement here in 20, uh, verse 21. I am ashamed to say that we have, we have been too weak, <laughs> weak work in quotation marks, right. to do that. So, yeah, maybe he's referring to I'm being, you, they have been told I'm weak. So we have been too weak to do something so stupid as they what they right, are Right, right. Yeah, they're, they're painting him to be or, yeah. or, or giving the image of him being a weak person if he doesn't come out and, 
and, and same <laughs> way. Is, all you have to do is listen to what he said in verses yeah. uh, yeah. 14 and 15. He's uh -huh. not he's not weak. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what if they they're calling me weak. Well, maybe it's because I'm too weak to uh -huh. be um, so off uh, off base off. Uh, well, I was saying that me being not arrogant doesn't yes. mean that I am weak. Correct. That's uh, a good summary. Yeah. That, 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 that's not what it means, yes. Yeah, oh boy, oh boy, what Paul was de uh, dealing there with, with the church here, uh, here in Corinth. Uh, and uh, these matters, these issues, and these struggles that uh, he was dealing with, one way or another, they are with Christ Church today, even we speak anywhere these are issues that the church is dealing with i'm sure so in the light of this we are learning from afar mm -hmm. we can make connections but yeah these are relevant issues uh, would, about would you, the church even sorry. today would you agree that um it's not so simple as uh false apostles and and are false teachers and um, good and true and solid doctrine that it's it's more often that some that there's like gray areas that some people I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not always obvious um, in a person's ministry they may be they may start out um, I'm thinking of some contemporary situations they may start out with with their heart in the right place and they're servant serving god but then um they might see well i'm getting some some fame and some power and then mm -hmm. they start changing mm -hmm. and um and therefore end up in a place where they're leading people um, misleading misleading people. yeah yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying oh no, i do know changing. what you're saying it's, it's happening all the time yeah I think, yeah I'm, I'm not sure if i'm articulating it very well yeah yeah. But it's it's not like well we can see that person is is um, is not preaching true gospel and this mm -hmm. person is it's more of a uh, human slippery slope I guess uh -huh. sometimes yeah um, unfortunately I'm sure that we've been witnessing something like that in the world and with some of uh, some of these uh, with all due respect with some of these fame preachers that are well known and well known some of them and unfortunately and that is where your your um, following of christ comes in the picture that you exactly. need to watch your heart you can lose it easy yeah. Yeah. and satan comes after you uh, if you are in any kind of leadership position in the ministry uh, do you think satan would appreciate that he comes strongly after you mm -hmm. he wants and he knows that when he gets you uh, he gets several other people who is looking up to you, right. following you, right. listening to what you say, and then when you fail, or he make you fail, you give, give in to something. And we all have those uh, fences, should I say it, using, putting it metaphorically, mm -hmm. in our lives, in our personalities, and our low fences, weak mm -hmm. spots in our yes. uh, defending spiritual fence around our heart and soul mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if you recognize what where the fence is low where the devil can jump in you better watch that mm -hmm. it may be something in your personality maybe something in the way of your doing and you need to watch that sometimes by god's grace we strong, grow strong with those weak part of our fences mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. using that word so that we become very strong and we can be great encourager to somebody we notice are dealing with the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but that takes a deep and close walk with Lord Jesus. Right. That is what it takes. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, unfortunately there there are in the Christian ministry there are mm -hmm. there are false teachers yeah. today yeah. out there and leading misleading people and which is so sad. It is so sad thing. Some knowingly, intentionally doing that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just getting lost, you know, uh, 
with their teachings and, and I know we've been watching this has been publicly um, on, on, on news and, and we watch it and it's, it's, it's a sad to me I, it always breaks my heart it don't matter who that person is if I know I have reason to believe that that person has been successful in the ministry right. leading people to Christ and being a great encourager mm -hmm. and then when the world put that person down when they celebrate about somebody's faults mm -hmm. publicly that's a, that's a that's a sad situation. Mm -hmm. It is hurting the whole body of Christ. Yes, yes, yes. And, and the, your, um, this is why to Paul it was so very important that not let these uh, leaders or apostles, they call him call themselves apostles, to mislead God's church. Remember the church at Corinth was very young. They were unexperienced. They haven't been through a lot yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they were easy target for somebody who wanted to wanted to um, get some personal gain by presenting themselves as apostles. And mm -hmm. There was room for an apostle because the real apostle wasn't there all the time. Right. There was room for these people to show up. Kind of swoop in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's let well, well we are running out of time. Uh, let's go ahead and complete this reading and say we can say a word or two about it. Okay, starting at twenty two. Yes. Um, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I have worked harder, been put in prison more often been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers, but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty, and have, gone, have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then, besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak without my feeling that weakness? Who is led astray and I do not burn with anger? If I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who is worthy of eternal praise, knows I am not lying. When I was in Damascus, the governor under King Eratus kept guards at the city gates to catch me. I had to be lowered in a basket through a window in the city wall to escape from him. Okay, thank you so much for uh, good reading. So here we hear the words from real apostle. You can hear his heartbeat. You can understand that this man talks for the Lord. Uh, Paul presents uh, his uh, credentials, so to speak, and re, uh, represents uh, them to, uh, to his dear people. Listen to this. Uh, whatever they have told about me, uh, here is who I am. You know, here is who I. Here is what I am. What I am. Who I am. And I'm sure whoever was listening to this and reading these lines understand that uh, this is this is God's man, and this is not somebody who is seeking for his own personal gain to minister to us, but he's he's the man. He's the servant God has sent to us. He's the, he's the one who really cares. Uh, and as God, as he put it here, uh, about, about his heart, uh, he says, for I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, he's, he's, he is behind these words when you listen to this, these words that he's sharing with, with his dear people. So uh, 
this is this is where how far we got at this time. There's much more to it. Am I right? Yeah. There's much more to it. Now next time uh, we uh, come back with the chapter 12, and then we have one more chapter after that. It's what the whole letter to Colossians are waiting for us. Yeah. That. Yeah. So we are not running out of topics. We are, we are, we are doing well. So the, the Lenten season is coming um, before too long. So we are taking a break during Lenten. We are going to have here a Lenten journey, 2022. It is going to be seven week journey and it's going to be at noon, hopefully in person. Hopefully we can do it in person. So, um, okay, let's, let's pray. I'm going to ask Mary to please lead us in prayer, close in prayer, and then we go from there. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you again for teaching us, for showing us that, uh, that we are that we are human and that those in the Bible, the stories and the, the narrations and the, the incidents that happen and the, the um, struggles are, are representative of things that we struggle with and that we walk through and that we also have to discern and follow you, um, just like Paul is saying to the Corinthians, to follow the true gospel, to follow Jesus, to follow um, who you are in our lives. So, Father, we ask that you would continually give us strength and wisdom and guidance through your Holy Spirit, that, uh, that we would walk in a way that's pleasing to you and also in a way that reflects who you are in this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Keep on reading. See you next time. God bless you.